Living with an electric car is actually really simple. You plug in, you charge up, you drive, and then just repeat as required. But while that process is straightforward enough, the world of electric cars does have its quirks. And I don't mean the Citroen Ami. Now, some of them are obvious, some of them less so, but the good news is that I'm here to tell you what they are, why they exist, and how you can turn them to your advantage. So buckle up as I run down the six electric car battery facts that you need to know. This is something that confuses a lot of electric car drivers, and it used to really confuse me. And you know what? It's easy to see why. I mean, you wouldn't tell someone that a train journey takes two hours to do 80% of it, would you? So why does the car industry only quote recharging times to not quite full? The reason is actually a little bit complicated, but I will try and keep things simple. Batteries are brilliant, but they also need looking after. If you overfill the tank of a petrol or diesel car, you'd get nothing more than wet feet. But with an electric car, things are a bit different. When batteries reach the point where they're nearly full, about 80%, the battery cells are less able to charge at high speeds. So the clever electronics that control the incoming charge reduce the amount of power that goes into the pack. It's a bit like pouring my cup of tea. Now, as I get to the top of the cup, I ease off the flow because I don't want to waste my tea and spill it everywhere. Now, if I go back to the car, what this means is that the last 20% of that battery takes a lot longer to fill than the first 80% because it goes in slower. So unless you absolutely need 100% to get to your destination or another charger, then unplug at 80% and get back on the road. It's also the polite thing to do. Don't hog the chargers by staying to fill that last 20% unless you really need to. When you buy an electric car, there are a lot of numbers involved. Battery size, power and range are the three main ones that buyers tend to obsess over when they're making their decision. But there is an equally important number that many electric car buyers forget to check. Charging speeds. In simple terms, this is the speed at which your car can fill its battery. Now, all electric cars limit the speed at which power can be fed into the batteries. That's mainly to keep them in tip-top condition. So this Citroen EC4 can charge at a maximum rate of 100 kilowatts, which is pretty good. Now, a lot of buyers, with good reason, assume that their cars will charge at that speed from the moment they plug in to the moment they disconnect. And you know what? Why wouldn't they? A petrol or diesel pump runs at the same speed as soon as you pull the trigger. So why isn't an electric car the same? Electric car batteries do need looking after and zapping them with high voltages isn't a great idea if you want them to last a lifetime. So I like to think that the car's battery management system acts a bit like a nightclub bouncer. It only allows as much energy into the battery as it can safely handle. So when you plug in, electricity flows at a relatively slow rate and then it ramps up to top the speed up before tailing off again at 80 percent you also need to factor in the temperatures so just like many of us electric car batteries hate being cold a cold battery will take longer to charge because the cells need to be at an optimum temperature in order to store energy so a car like the Citroen EC4 comes with something called a battery heat pump system, which can cleverly warm the pack to make the charging sessions more efficient. Very useful. By law, car makers have to provide what's known as WLTP consumption figures when they sell an electric car. These figures are generated from independent tests done in controlled conditions at fixed temperatures to create a level playing field for everyone. But here's the problem. None of us actually drive in controlled conditions on the road. Sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's hot. Sometimes you have the heater cranked up to 25 degrees and sometimes you're driving on the motorway for hours on end, all of which draws more power from the battery. So unless your usual drive is in a wind tunnel at a steady 21 degrees, the chances are that your car will have a slightly lower range than the WLTP figure suggests. 
In the early days of electric cars, the onset of winter would spell bad news in terms of range expectations. So that's because batteries don't work as efficiently at low temperatures. And cabin heating systems draw a lot of power from the battery pack. Thankfully, things have improved a lot over the years. So this Citroen EC4, for example, comes with what's known as a heat pump, and that's fitted as standard. So this works in the opposite way to the fridge in your kitchen. It draws in cold air, compresses it, and then uses the heat to warm the cabin and also the battery if it needs it. And it can also take heat from the battery pack and use that to keep you warm as well. So let's have a little sympathy now, please, for the hardest working and possibly most controversial part of an electric car, the range display. Now, if you've never driven an electric car before, this is a figure on the dashboard just in front of you that gives you an idea, and that's the key part of this, an idea of how many miles of charge your battery has got left in it. And it's to give drivers, you know, an idea of how far we're going to be able to get. And this is how the car does it. The rangeometer takes into account a whole load of factors, including the amount of charge left in the battery, obviously, along with the exterior temperature to work it out. Now, what a rangeometer can't predict is how you'll drive, what road you're going to be driving on, and whether it's going to get warmer or colder. A rangeometer can only guess the range based on the information it gets at the time. So if you're pootling along in town at 30 miles per hour, you might see a very healthy figure appear. And if you carried on pootling around at 30 miles per hour, you'd probably achieve it. However, if you then hit the motorway, crank the heating up and put three 20 stone rugby players in the back, that range figure is going to drop. So our advice, well, just cut the range on the some slack and use your common sense to help you work out how far you'll be able to drive. You will, I promise, quite quickly get a feel for what your car battery is capable of and it does make planning your journeys a lot easier. For example, I no longer panic when I see the figure on the motorway dropping if I know that my exit for home is close by because I know that once I come off that exit, the rangeometer will increase as it adapts to my slower driving style. You do start to get used to your own car's little idiosyncrasies and it starts to get used to you. Now, if you're one of those people who likes to keep the biscuit tin full, you never have an empty fridge, this next piece of battery advice might come as a bit of a shock. If you want to treat your battery to the automotive equivalent of a weekend spa retreat, try to resist the urge to charge it up after every drive. All electric car batteries are at their happiest at around 60% charged. If your commute uses, say, 25% of your charge, try and run the battery down and then charge every third day. This is going to be a little kinder to the battery than repeating the charge cycle to full every 24 hours. On a car like the Citroen EC4, you can easily set the charge via the charging menu and if you do need a full charge to maximise your range, then you can easily override it. So there you go. Six electric car battery facts that every electric car driver should know. And if you want to know more about making the switch, then do head over to Electric Explained because together with Citroen, we're here to clear the air.